By now, you must be painfully aware of the difference in combat power between the world government's most elite fighting force and you, a mere band of pirates. Hello and welcome to One Piece 101, the series that breaks down everyone and everything in the One Piece world. Today, we'll be taking a look at the intelligence agency operated by the world government, Cypherpol. Cypherpol is short for Cypher Police, and they act as sort of a secret intelligence service, existing primarily in an effort to continually consolidate power for the world government, generally by any means necessary. And as a result, while Cypherpol do work with and as an extension of the Marine Forces, they are controlled directly by the world government. The existence of the Cypherpol organization can thus far be traced back at least 63 years, as Mother Caramel used to provide orphans to the world government through Cypherpol. Although it is entirely possible and likely that Cypherpol has existed as long as the world government itself. Officially, there are eight Cypherpol units, which are given the abbreviated names CP1, CP2, CP3, and so on and so forth until we reach CP8. These cells operate in eight separate bases all around the world, and their purpose is mainly for gathering intelligence and enacting counterinsurgency. In the series so far, we've encountered agents from three of these official cells. For example, the CP5 cell, once led by Spandam, was responsible for framing the shipwright Tom and acquiring the plans for the ancient weapon Pluton, although they did fail in the latter task. It should also be noted that no members from CP5 appeared to have any kind of special abilities. In regards to CP6, while on the sea train, we encountered Jerry, who was allegedly a boxing master who was rather easily defeated by Sanji. But that said, Jerry appears to have been trusted enough to lead his own squad of marines rather than acting with other members of his cell. Thus far, he is the only named member of CP6. In a similar vein, the only member of CP7 we have ever encountered is the rather comical Wanzi, who possessed a wide variety of strange abilities to do with ramen noodles, and yeah, he looked like a weirdo doing it, but his techniques were surprisingly effective. Wanzi also labelled himself as the ace of CP7, although it is unknown if he is the leader of the group. Sadly, that's everything we know of the eight public cells, but hey, this would hardly be a super cool James Bond style intelligence agency without secrets of its own. One of these need-to-know groups is CP9, creatively named because the number 9 comes after the number 8. Despite being a secret from the public, CP9 are by far the most well-known cell to the One Piece fanbase, as they served as the primary antagonists of the Water 7 and any Slobby arcs. Although it should be noted that a previous incarnation of CP9 was seen in Robin's flashback on Ohara, and their leader, Spandine, was the one who ordered the Buster Call that destroyed the entire island. Unlike the previous eight groups, CP9 are an extraordinarily competent cohort of individuals trained to become assassins with the gathering of intelligence as a secondary function. To illustrate, four agents of CP9 were sent to infiltrate the shipbuilding island of Ward 7. This mission was extraordinarily long term as these agents spent five long years working their way into high positions and becoming very close to the president, Iceberg. Furthermore, while the strength levels of CP1 to CP8 differ quite greatly, power of CP9 is in a whole league of its own. In addition to having surpassed the limits of regular humans, the members of CP9 are trained from childhood in special techniques known as the Rokushiki, or the Six Powers in English. These skills are designed to improve all aspects of combat, making the user faster, more agile, more durable, and incredibly deadly. As they are assassins, these techniques are designed to kill quickly and quietly without an excess use of energy. Further adding to their arsenal of skills, most CP9 members are also Devil Fruit users, and for those that aren't, Devil Fruits can be acquired for them as a reward for services rendered, as demonstrated by both Kaku and Kalifa. CP9 are based on the judicial island of any slobby, and are deployed to deal with extraordinarily important matters to the world government. For example, when CP9 encountered the Straw Hats, they were tasked with capturing Nico Robin, a rare person capable of reading the ancient language, as well as acquiring the blueprints for the ancient weapon Pluton. CP9 is officially led by Spandam, the same man who previously led CP5. Although it needs to be stressed that he is unlike any of his other members, because he is incredibly weak. In fact, it has been officially confirmed that Spandam is weaker than the average marine soldier, possessing a mere nine doikiri, while the average marine has 10, a much more better number. However, his strength is irrelevant because the real star of CP9 is Rob Lucci, a suave, sadistic, and practically unbeatable agent. With that said, he was indeed beaten, and the modern incarnation of CP9 as a whole were defeated at any slobby by the Straw Hat Pirates. They barely escaped the destruction of the island and were subsequently fired by the world government and became fugitives for a short time. However, CP9 is not the only secret cypherpole organization, and in fact, there exists an even secreter secret cell given the title CP0. CP0 are known as the strongest of all cypherpole 
noble organizations and work directly for the world nobles. They are also known as Cypherpol Aegis Zero, with Aegis being a reference to the mythological shield associated with both Zeus and Athena, which is an apt name considering that the world nobles use CP0 as a holy defense against their enemies in the world. CP0's presence in the world first became apparent during the Dress Rosa arc, where previous members of CP9, Rob Lucci, Spandam, and Kaku, were all revealed to be part of the organization. One further member appeared during the Whole Cake Island arc named Stussy. However, there are currently at least three other unknown members who we have only seen clad in masks. Speaking of being clad, unlike the other CP cells who all tend to dress in black, CP0 favors a pure white aesthetic, which is in keeping with the holy fashion sense of the world nobles. And actually, you know what? I'm, I'm a liar. Because CP5 also seems to enjoy wearing primarily white, for the most part. Some more fun facts about Cypher Ball. The Cypherpol name is inspired by a combination of MI6 and Interpol, MI6 being the secret intelligence service based in the UK, while Interpol is the International Criminal Police Organization, a name which has always struck me as a bit weird. I mean, are they criminals, or are they police, or perhaps both? Many Cypherpol agents appear to be orphan children taken in by the world government. This is particularly true in the case of CP9, all of whom were trained as children, with the exception of Kumadori, Califa, and of course, Spandam, because it's clear that nobody ever trained that dude. Speaking of CP9 in particular, despite the fact that they are meant to be a secret organization, their existence seems to be common knowledge amongst the Marines. Not only that, but the Marines also seem to be well informed of the identities of CP9's members. In some initial concept art for CP9, their original matchups against the Straw hats were revealed. Luffy was going to fight Luchi as expected, however things got weird from here. Califa was going to fight Robin, Fukuro was going to face Nami, Luena would be squaring off against Usopp, Apollo, later renamed Kumidori, was given a date with Chopper, which hey also actually happened, Shaqeen, later renamed Jabra, was going to lose to Zoro, and Kaku was going to be Sanji's opponent. And finally, a truly useless fact, in this same early concept art, it is seen that originally, Kaku had a normal nose. Which I just, uh, I just don't need. And that pretty much does it for Cypherpol. If you enjoyed this video, then feel free to like, favorite, or subscribe. And if you are in any way keen on supporting independent creators, then also feel free to check out my Patreon, Discord server, or Twitter, the links to which are in the handy description below. Finally, please do comment with who, what, or where you'd like to see featured in the next One Piece 101.